futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good day, everyone. I'm Rapstein. Friday, September 9, 2011, getting on about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the day of the world. Uh, if you would look at the market, you would think things were going absolutely disastrous, and they are in terms of the stock market, but are they? If you really look, you haven't made lower lows in any of the major stock indices. Yeah, you've still got a pattern of lower highs, higher lows. You're narrowing in this market in a big way. The gold market today should be something of a disappointment in the term that you had everything going on from talk of a Greek default to where the Greek government had to come out and deny it to the president's speech last night and where which way is that going to go I don't think it went the way that the president wanted it to go and the gold is basically unchanged now the silver and copper markets are responding to the break in the stock market they're, they're responding to the fear that Europe is going into further turmoil as Greece made the fault there's so much noise about it you got to believe that we're, there's this much smoke there's going to be fire and unless you get the EU all 17 members to do something dramatic it's probably going to happen. I saw some of the interest rates in Greece went up to 64%. There's nobody, nothing. You can't make enough money to pay back 64% on the money, so you can forget that. You're looking at the EU, the euro currency, down nearly two and a half cents today. And, of course, what's anchoring the gold, holding it back, is the rally in the dollar almost up a full penny today. No question about that. So now the market, I think, is caught in this trading range, and no more than that, the 1923 level to the 1705 level. And when I widen the chart out and I put on the swing line study, you get an even better picture. A bull trend is normally made up of higher highs and higher lows. I'm looking for a pattern like this, just like this, to develop in here somewhere, and I'm looking for another buy signal. Yes, I'm still very much in the bull camp. The market is refusing to confirm the last signal, which was a low that was lower than a previous low. So that's the most current influence in the market, and we don't know if the high 1923.70 is going to be taken out on this run or not. Okay, that's important. Well, let's also look at the red line in the sand, and I want you to look at that 18-day average of closes. Since July, you've been over that, and when you've hit it and come down to it, you haven't been able to close under it at no point. That's very important. So we know where the market, on the technical point of view, what technicians seem to be looking at. And this is their buy zone, in my opinion, the 1827-20 zone. They'll probably be wrong and throw in a towel to get under 1793.80. Now, some of the support zones in the market, I can predict already. If the market were to take out 1793.80, the way that I chart, I'd be looking at the 45-day and the 100-day moving averages. Where do they come in? Right now, this number's climbing each day, so let's assume it's in the 1715 to 1750 zone, if that happened in the next few days. But the 100-day average, that's going to lumber along, and you'll be lucky if it's 1608 where it is now to 16 and a quarter in the next week or so. Okay, what about the Bollinger Band? Ah, this is even more important, 1750, which fits in with the previous break lows if the market were to let go to the downside. So, as I see it, if you were to break out on the down, I'm looking for the 1750 area. If the market rallies, I expect more resistance in 1905. I'd love to see the market not take out 1923.70 here, but instead back and forth, just like it did back in this zone, right here, for another ultimate buy signal. The se seasonal influence at this time of the year is typically up in gold, not down as well. Another buy signal in terms of seasonality comes in on the market, believe it or not, on September 10th, which is tomorrow, and it's just how the market plays out. And it, typically, the market's under this seasonal influence until the end of September, and then other influences come in. Does that mean the market has to pay attention to seasonals? 100% of the time, no. Is the market in a bullish configuration? It is. Did the market get hurt the other day when you took out, when that 1793.80 took this number out right here? It did. And I think that's what you're doing. The market's now winding itself up for potentially another move.
In the silver market, the break today, as big as it is, only fell back to that 18-day average of closes. You haven't broken down. You're not getting momentum shifting where the stochastic is turning down. I'm very, very neutral in this market, and actually neutral in the gold because you're over that 18-day average. The copper market, I think I've said here repeatedly that I'm still looking for support against this support area where you went sideways for so long. And this is your first probe today where you're coming into that, and this is just under the, what, $4 uh, a pound area, and you could slip back here into the, let's call it the 390 zone, 394, the Bollinger Band. I can accept that, especially, by the way, the market will accelerate to the downside, maybe even take this all out, should you get a Greek default. You'd scare the heck out of everybody for the near term in buying raw materials. And that is the reason that the silver market is so much as a loss today to the gold market, which is actually up a little bit as silver is down. The industrial materials don't know what to make out of what's going on in Europe. Neither should you. Nobody knows. This is a total area we haven't seen. In the crude oil market, I was impressed. The market even with the stock market breaking, all it did is hit your Bollinger top two days ago, pull back to the 18-day average. So 86.50, as I see it, is still support. You are overbought as can be. Look at your stochastic. Even if you fall, I'm not looking for much more than 82.37, but there's a caveat in everything I've got to say. This is assuming that Europe doesn't tank. And nobody knows if that's going to happen. If I'm the ECB, if I'm the EU, if I'm the IMF, you're going to pull out every plug right now. It is time to stop the nonsense of I'll take a step here, I'll take a step there. That is what's wrong when you put together 17 countries into a zone. It's the exact problem. There isn't that central leadership. and Somebody's got to make a final decision. That's what the market needs. We'll see if it gets it. What about the Brent? Same argument. All you did is pull back to support, 111.63. I think the pros bought it today, putting their stops under 109.85. However, should you have? Well, you're still overbought. If the market doesn't line up right, what's the point of it? But the overall trend hasn't been broken. That's really the argument that I'm making. Rebob Gasoline did break its trend today. So the pattern is now very difficult. It leans to the bare side. First of all, look at the momentum. It's turned down. Number two, you see the 27702? I think that if today on the break the pros were buying against the 18-day average of 279.09, I think when you broke that they threw in the towel. You're at 277.36, and I think that now the market is sitting with a bearish bias until you take out 291.75 again. And if Europe lets go, you're going to go, I think, to the 265 area. That's the big play that you have to worry about. In the note market. I realize that the 10-year note, and that's the chart you're looking at, is looking at yields in the cash market that is a 60-year low. It's hard to believe that you're going to put up your money for 10 years and get a 1.9% return. Somebody's doing it, and they're not concerned about return of money as much as they are return of capital, and that's the problem. Do you want to invest in Europe at this point in time? I doubt it. Do you want to put it in Japan? Well, their own economy has been shaken. Have, have we forgotten everything? Where are you going? So where are you going to put that money? And that becomes the problem. And by default, the notes have been rallying up. And as you can see, look at the 18-day average of closes, how the market has held that. It's not been an easy market to trade. These have been the most difficult times that I've seen of an August, early September period in a very, very long time. However, the trend speaks for itself. This market keeps butting up against the Bollinger top, and until you take out a previous break low, 129.23 in this instance, about a point, point and a quarter away, not much you can do. And the market is overbought. So you sit and you look at how...